Hello everyone. The scriptures teach that Jesus was born of God or begotten of God, same thing, in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod. But the scriptures also teach that Jesus was born again or begotten again, same thing, when God raised him from the dead. Acts 13.30 But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, the very ones who are now his witnesses to the people. And we preach to you the good news of the promise made to the fathers, that God has fulfilled this promise to our children, in that he raised up Jesus, just as it has been written in the second psalm, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Acts 13.30-33 And here we see Paul explaining to us that the second psalm, You are my son, today I have begotten you, was fulfilled when God raised Jesus from the dead. And this just is left right out of Trinitarian doctrine. It's basically ignored or denied because they can't make it fit. It doesn't fit in Trinitarian doctrine. They read that um, Jesus was a son prior to his death on the cross, and so they can't make sense how the second psalm, You were my son today, I have begotten you, could possibly refer to the resurrection. It just doesn't make sense to them. And it's, it's pretty much the same thing as Acts 2.36, where we read Peter tell us that, Peter tells us that God had made Jesus Lord. And so they read in Luke 2, well, Jesus is called Lord in Christ. So he was Lord before he was raised from the dead, so they just deny Acts 2.36 because they can't make sense out of it. And that's the way things work in Trinitarian world. If you can't make sense out of something, you just kind of twist it and contort it and distort it, or you ignore it, or you deny it and forget about it, whatever you need to do for the sake of your doctrine. If you read through Acts 13, 30 to 33, you'll see it's undeniable that the second psalm, You are my son, today I have begotten you, is being applied to Jesus' resurrection. Jesus was begotten out of the dead when God raised him from the dead. And that's why the scriptures refer to Jesus as the firstborn out of the dead. The life into which he was born in Bethlehem was over. He was dead. And so to come to life again, he needed to be born again a second time. And that's why we can be born again in him. And Jesus died sinless. And that's why he could be born again. And it's the same for us. Our sins need to be washed away first by dying with him on his cross so that we might be born again anew into his resurrection life. Same thing. And so we're born again in God's firstborn, out of the dead, Jesus. He was begotten when God raised him from the dead. Let's read this again, and I'm going to continue reading past the second psalm again, and you'll see that both the preceding and following context are referring to the resurrection. But God raised him from the dead. There you go. And for many days he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, the very ones who are now his witnesses to the people. And we preach to you the good news of the promise made to the fathers, that God has fulfilled this promise to our children in that he raised up Jesus. Just as it is written in the second psalm, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And as for the fact that he raised him from the dead, no longer to return to corruption, he has spoken in this way, I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. 
Therefore, he also says in another psalm, you will not allow your Holy One to undergo corruption. That's also quoted at Acts 2. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid among his fathers, and he did undergo corruption. But he whom God raised did not undergo corruption. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. You see the whole thing from verse 30 right down to verse 37 is all about the resurrection of Jesus and how God fulfilled his promise to the fathers by raising up Jesus, fulfilling the second psalm. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Today when God raised him from the dead. Really quite plain. Really quite plain. He was begotten again a second time by the Spirit of the living God. The same thing happens at Hebrews chapter 1 when we read it. And we'll just start here halfway through verse 3. Having made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, the risen Jesus, having become as much superior to the angels as he has inherited a more excellent name than them. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. You see that? Same thing again. The second psalm is being applied to the resurrection of Jesus. The first born out of the dead. The first begotten out of the dead. God begat Jesus out of the dead. And that's why he's called the firstborn out of the dead. Very, very, very plain. And it's a very important thing to understand if you're going to understand who and what Jesus is. And again, in Hebrews chapter 5, So also Christ did not glorify himself so as to become a high priest. But he who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. There it is again. Just as he says also in another passage, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Okay? Now, when did Jesus become a priest according to the order of Melchizedek? When he was raised from the dead. And having been made perfect, verse 9, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation, being designated by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. So there's three examples here where we find the second psalm, you were my son, today I have begotten you, uh, being applied to Jesus' resurrection when God begat him out of the dead, the firstborn out of the dead. And it's just something that, you know, is left out of Trinitarian doctrine, essentially, because they can't make it fit. And it's a very, very, very important thing to understand. It's basic to Christianity. God bless you.